Hi, I'm Doc Wilkie, and I'd like to welcome you here. We're going to take a look today at uh, Celestron's brand new uh, entry level telescope, the Cosmos First Scope 76. Now, what this is, is this is a very simple reflecting telescope. It is on a tabletop mount, uh, which is a Dobsonian mount. It's great for those who are wanting to get into astronomy. Uh, right now, it's $69.99, but I have saw them on Amazon.com for $59.95. So, let's take a look at this uh, first scope by Celestron. First off, it's the Cosmos. It goes along with the uh, television series Cosmos. As it actually says on the side of the telescope here, Cosmos, a space-time odyssey. And with a lot of tabletop telescopes, I really like this one because they actually took and put a picture of a nebula on the telescope. So it's a little bit more showy than just a plain white or black telescope tube. And like I said, it's on a Dobsonian mount, so... Swing it up out of the storage position, and I'll bring this up a little bit. Here we have the focuser. This is where you would put an eyepiece. It does come with two eyepieces, and I'll show you those in a minute. Over here is where you adjust how much tension you want on your scope or to lock it into place. It does come with a red dot finding scope. Uh, the older model uh, first scopes from Celestron did not have those with them. Those were an accessory item. But this particular model comes with that as well as two eyepieces and I'll show you those in a minute. And also comes with a optical cleaning cloth, which is nice. I really like this scope. I've been into astronomy now for well over 50 years and I wish they would have had these when I got started. The first time I looked into the heavens at night it was with a, a 60 millimeter Tasco telescope that my father had picked up for my birthday from a department store for $12. Of course in those days that was a lot of money. But uh, this is an excellent beginner's telescope. It has a cap to keep the dirt out of the inside of the telescope. And what a reflecting telescope is, is that you'll see two types of telescopes, reflecting and you'll see refracting. Refracting is the long ones that you see everybody standing and looking behind it, through it, because there's a series of lenses that create magnification. A reflecting telescope, there is a mirror back here, it's called a primary mirror, and there is a secondary mirror underneath the focuser. And I'll spin it around. As you can see right there is the secondary mirror. And so light from the night sky passes into the telescope. You are then looking at the primary mirror from the secondary mirror and through an eyepiece is where you actually create your magnification. This type of telescope is very good at uh, picking up uh, low light where the refracting doesn't absorb as much light. So it's a good entry level scope and the fact that you can actually see into it uh, makes it helpful to learn how a telescope works. I was very fortunate this came to me from Celestron. I had taken part in what uh, they had last year called uh, Where Do You Celestron? I had submitted my story and uh, they chose to use it. So as a thank you, they sent me this and I'm very thankful for it. Thank you, Celestron. Um, I used to have much larger telescopes but I'm disabled and pretty much confined to a wheelchair nowadays. 
So a small scope like this is handy for me because I can merely put it in my lap as I go outside in my wheelchair where I used to have large reflecting telescopes weighing several hundred pounds. I just cannot move those around anymore. But even with a small scope like this, a small entry level scope, you will easily be able to see things such as the moon, uh, the planets, you'll see able to see Jupiter, the Jupiter's moons, you'll be able to see Saturn, the rings of Saturn, Mars, you can actually see the uh, polar ice caps of Mars if you use what is called a filter. And this telescope does not come with filters, but I'm going to take a break and show you the eyepieces. It comes with, here's the first one, a 20 millimeter. These are Kellner lenses, which are uh, an older type of lens, but they work very well. They're inexpensive, but they work. And the other one is a 10 millimeter lens. This is inside its case. And what the 10 millimeter does is it gives you 30x magnification. The 20 millimeter will give you 15x magnification. This telescope will accept any inch and a quarter eyepiece. So you can buy extra eyepieces. They don't have to be Kellner. They can be Palossal and any of the others. But Kellner is inexpensive, but they do work. And for the person starting out, they're great. And just like any eyepiece, they are threaded on the inside here. And what that's for is, is so you can use a filter. This is a moon filter. It did not come with this telescope. I have one, but it just threads into the barrel of the eyepiece. And I would strongly recommend that if you're getting into astronomy, you at least do purchase a moon filter because the moon is quite a bright object when you look through a telescope and it is so bright that it will bleach out a lot of what you can see where the filter darkens it down and allows you to see good contrast. As you get into astronomy, you will discover that uh, there are different colors of filters and they do different things. Some will highlight the the uh, cloud bands of Jupiter. Some will allow you to see more clearly the rings of Saturn, the different colors in the rings and the cloud bands around Saturn. Uh, others will allow you to see higher contrast on Mars. Some will help bring out details in comets. So that's just an aftermarket item. They're inexpensive. I remember this is actually Celestron moon filter. I picked this up off of eBay some time ago. I think I gave $15 for it. It's well worth it. But uh, this is their new Cosmos. And if you're really thinking about getting into astronomy, I strongly suggest you take a good look at it. It's easy just to pick it up and put it into a car, take it with you out to the park, put it on a park bench. You don't even need a bench. You could lay a blanket on the ground and just lay there and watch the stars. It's uh, 76 millimeter in diameter back here. That's where the mirror is. It has a 300 millimeter focal length and uh, it's an F4 as far as it's light gathering capacity. So like I said, this was just a show and tell. I would encourage you to go to Celestron's uh, website for more detailed information. But if you're looking to get into astronomy, this would be an excellent place to start. It's not a complicated scope. For young children, you'll still need to give them some guidance. It's not indestructible. It will break, but it's not delicate. So it could take some, you know, new hands handling. So I just want to share that with you today. Thank you for stopping by. And I'd like to, to uh, tell you about, I do have a Facebook page called the Adena Trail Observatory, which is what I call my little viewing out here. So I'll put the link below. You're welcome to stop by there. I put up little charts and such to help new people get started. I'm also very much into uh, the observing of the sun which you should never do unless you have the proper filters. 
and I mean real filters, never do some homemade sun filter. You'll lose your eyesight. It's not worth it. You know, there are companies out there who manufacture solar filters. I would suggest that if you want to start viewing the sun, that you purchase a filter through them. So, thank you very much. Have a blessed day.